10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The children on Moonbase Genesis 2 knew it was an honour to be chosen to colonise the Earth's only natural satellite. But sometimes they missed Earth. The moon was dry and dusty. The base was made from titanium and Kevlar and artificial light was used to illuminate it. So at every opportunity, the children visited the Eden Dome a large dome-covered garden that supplied the base with fruit, vegetables and herbs. There were other plants as well. Some were for experimentation, but they all provided oxygen, which supplemented the pure oxygen extracted from carbon dioxide by the base's solar-powered equipment. The trees, shrubs and flowers reminded the children of their suburban backyards and city gardens on Earth. Sprawled out on the grass, Leela rolled over onto her stomach and looked at Pip. Are you enjoying school, Pip? She asked. Yeah, I can read now, said Pip, and count to 50. Good job, said Stella. So having a computer for a teacher is okay, asked Ryan. Mm, I suppose so, said Pip. You know, we had Android teachers on the earth, said Tristram but there was always a human teacher in the classroom. I'm still shocked Luna knew nothing about creation, said Stella. Luna was their school teacher, an artificial intelligence agent that appeared in holographic form in the education dome. Yeah, said Tristram. We had to teach it about God creating the earth and Adam and Eve. Even I knew that Bible story, said Pip and I'm the youngest person on the moon. Speaking of school, said Stella, we should leave for the education dome. Our lessons start soon. Oh, just a bit longer, said Tristram, closing his eyes and breathing in the perfumed air. It is time for your lessons to begin. Tristram's eyes flew open and he sat up. He saw Luna's holographic form flickering in front of him. How did you find us here? He asked. I have the ability to interface with all computer systems on Moonbase Genesis 2. You hacked in? I accessed the heat seeking systems from the Star Probe program to isolate your body heat. It hacked in, said Tristram. Rye, you need to tell your dad the commander about this. Luna's image turned 360 degrees. Its pale white opal eyes seemed to be studying the plants in the garden. The children waited. God created the earth and it was good. That's right, said Ryan. Negative. My database shows the earth is no longer good. Many parts are destroyed. There has been a miscalculation. Mm. Something did go wrong, Stella nodded, but it wasn't uncalculated. Huh? asked Pip. Not counted on, said Stella. Oh, I still don't get it. I am ready to receive additional data. Boy, said Tristram, this computer really likes to learn. Me too, said Pip. I'm ready to receive additional data. Okay, said Stella. We have to go back to the Garden of Eden. In the middle of the Garden of Eden were two special trees. One was the tree of life and the other was the tree giving knowledge of good and evil. 
God told Adam he could eat the fruit of any tree, but he must not eat the fruit from the tree giving knowledge of good and evil. To do so would be to disobey and bring death. Now the serpent, Satan, was more crafty than any living creature. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman replied, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God told us not to eat fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or touch it, or we will die. You will not die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the fruit of the tree looked good for eating. She also desired to know about good and evil and gain wisdom, so she took some of the forbidden fruit and ate it. She gave some to Adam, who was with her, and he ate it too. Immediately they realised they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the two of them heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They hid from God among the trees. God called to Adam, Where are you? Adam answered, I heard you in the garden and I was so afraid because I was naked that I hid. God replied, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Adam answered, The woman you put here with me gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than any other animals. You will crawl on your belly in the dust as long as you live. There will be hostility between you and the woman and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Then God said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy and in pain you will give birth. You will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. Then God addressed Adam. Since you listened to your wife and disobeyed, the ground is cursed. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles, though you will eat of its grains. By the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you die. For you were made from the dust, and to the dust you will return. Then Adam named his wife Eve, because she would be the mother of all who live. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. God said, Humans have become like us, knowing both good and evil. What if they reach out to take fruit from the tree of life and eat it? Then they will live forever. So God banished them from the Garden of Eden, and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground. Mighty cherubim angels were posted to stop Adam and Eve returning to the Garden of Eden and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. That's what is called the fall, said Stella. The human race fell from where it was and death entered into everything. Question, if God knew it would happen, why did he allow it? Ryan answered that. Because the best gift God gave human beings is the freedom to choose, the freedom to think and to use our conscience. A human who chooses to obey God means more to him than someone who is programmed to do it. He didn't want us all to be like computers or robots, said Tristram. Luna's pale eyes stared at the children in turn. Its holographic image faded in and out and then disappeared. You don't think I offended it, do you? said Tristram. How could it be offended? said Leela. It has no feelings. Pretty freaky, though, said Tristram. The children looked at him and nodded. <laughs>